Linear regression is one of the most powerful general purpose tools that we'll be talking about in this series of videos. And next we're going to talk about Bayesian linear regression. So why, what, what do we need Bayesian linear regression for? What is, what is this good for? So you might say, well, we, we spent all that hard work deriving the MLE estimate for linear regression, so why not use the MLE for the W vector? Remember, we were, we were computing the MLE for this vector of parameters W. And the problem with the MLE, as we know, MLEs often have the problem of overfitting. And this is a really serious, very severe problem. It can be a very severe problem with with linear regression when you use the MLE. So how can we address this? Well, one, you might say, why not use a maximum a posteriori estimate? Why not use a map? We'll put a prior, we'll put a prior on W and that will fix the overfitting problem. And yes, that's true, we will fix the overfitting problem. But there is still a problem with the map and that is we have no representation of our uncertainty. Not only do we have no representation of our uncertainty in W, we also have no representation of our uncertainty in the, the values that we're trying to predict, the Y's that we're trying to predict. So for example, so here's a little, let's, let's illustrate that with, a, with an example. This, this, is, this is actually a a very serious, uh, very important issue. Let's say we've got some points here. I don't know, just a few happy points hanging out there. And we want to we want to do linear regression. We get those example points and we're given we're asked for a new point. Maybe our new point is over here. So we so this is the x axis here. This is so that we're just thinking about a simple one-dimensional case here. So we just get one-dimensional x's and, and these y values. And these were our example points and now we have to predict what is the y for this point. So maybe if we did a, an MLE we would get something, I don't know, maybe, maybe, we just, maybe we just fit a line. We don't use basis functions or anything for to get uh, or maybe maybe we use our basis functions. Who knows? But let's say maybe maybe we get something that looks like this. I don't know. Maybe it looks something like this. And now you're asked to predict this point, and so you say, "Oh, well, that's right. That's just it's just this one." But now, what if you were? What if you had to? What if this were? You know, the diagnosis for a patient. Or what if this were something, you know, if this were something really important, like diagnosing a patient? Or what if this were an, an investment where you had to make, uh, you had to invest, say, a very large amount of money? You had to make a decision about investing a very large amount of money. Are you really certain that this is the correct point? And how certain are you? If you're going to, say, place a bet or something, it would be really convenient and really important to know how uncertain you are. And that is where the Bayesian approach comes in. So a Bayesian approach would say, okay, sure, yeah, this is going to be our, our mean prediction, but we're also going to represent our uncertainty. And let me draw our uncertainty by maybe, maybe we have some like error, you know, plus or minus some standard deviation or something in our error. So these this, these error bars here say, well, hey, I'm really, I, I really don't know what's going on at this point. It could be anywhere in this, in this huge range. So even though this is what I might nominally predict, I really don't know. So a Bayesian approach allows you to say, I don't know. And even further, it allows you to, if you had some loss function, not only to, to, to say, I don't know, but also to optimize using decision theory, you can optimize. So let's so let's make another bullet here. So why Bayesian? And we can optimize. This is really what it comes down to. We can optimize the appropriate loss function. 
That's the key. And the Bayesian approach allows us to do this because it allows us to get what we need in order to optimize the loss function. And what do we need to optimize the loss function? We need the predictive distribution on the y's. I mean, I'm assuming we have this is a loss function on the, the value that we're predicting here. So in that case, we would need the predictive distribution of y given x and the data. And this is what we what we really want. So Bayesian gives us the predictive distribution, which is what we really want. So in the rest of this video, I'm going to set up the problem. I'm going to just remind you sort of the linear regression problem, and then we'll put a prior on our w, on our w parameter. And um, and then I'm going to point you to some multi multivariate Gaussian videos because the multivariate Gaussian is an essential tool in Bayesian linear regression. And after that, we're gonna we're gonna start doing some doing some Bayesian inference with this model. So here's the model. Actually, well, here's first here's the setup. The setup. We are given, as usual, you know, any sort of supervised learning problem. We're given some data, x1, y1, up to xn, yn. And here, so let's, so this is a new line. Let's clear. Okay, now, so we're doing our setup, but the x's, xi is in rd for some d, and the y's are real valued. So this is just the usual setup. And now we will take a model, our model, Maybe we'll use a different color for our model. She's blue. Our model will be the following. We will model the Y's. You remember all this from the MLE computation of in linear regression. The Y's we will model as independent, conditionally independent, given W. And I emphasize given W because we're going to put a prior on w and what is the distribution of each y each y rather yi is normally distributed just a univariate normal with mean w transpose xi and let me fit for the for the variance here let me put a inverse or 1 over a it's going to be more convenient to work with these a's where or with this type of parameterization, and A here is just 1 over the variance. Sometimes this is called the precision, the precision, as opposed to, it's the, the precision is just 1 over the variance. And it's interesting, actually, when Gauss first formulated the Gaussian distribution, when he first published it, he, he did things in terms of the precision, which is kind of interesting because now everybody seems to like the, the variance better. But Gauss, Gauss likes the precision. And we'll see actually why that's... Uh, it's going to be useful in this, in this particular computation. All right, so this is our model of the y's given w. And what is w? w, we will model as normally, as a multivariate normal, with mean vector 0, and covariance matrix 1 over b, it's b inverse, times the identity matrix i. And here this 1 over b is, well rather, b is also a precision. So maybe I should say here a is some positive, strictly positive number, and here b is some strictly positive number. And this, if you know the multivariate Gaussian, or if you're, so I'm going to direct you in a second uh, to the videos on the multivariate Gaussians, and you will see there that what this is doing is this is saying, so this W here, this is an, just an aside, W is a vector, W1 up to WD, because the XIs live in RD. And what this is doing when we put this multivariate 
this particular multivariate Gaussian distribution on W, that makes each of these independent each of these coordinates w1 up to wd independent and in fact they will they're actually iid since the diagonal of this matrix of the covariance matrix has all the same entries all right so this is our model and now before we oh and one more thing i need to say for as part of our model we will assume that A and B are known. So our parameter vector W, or theta rather, you know, we usually use theta for the generic vector of all parameters, and theta in this case is just W. That's the only the only parameter of this of these distributions that's that's unknown to us. All right, so we're going to stop there in this video, and before we proceed, so in the next video, we're going to start computing the posterior distribution on W given the data, and we're also going to compute the predictive distribution. But before we do that, you will need to understand multivariate Gaussian distributions, and so you should watch the videos on multivariate Gaussian distributions before proceeding. All right. I'll see you after you watch those. I'll see you back here and we will do Bayesian linear regression.